Hey, Kayak Mike here. I didn't, whoop, just broke some of my kayak, it's okay. Uh, we're gonna go over how to bump. This applies to any kind of fishing, boat, doesn't matter, or kayak. I have caught, I don't know, a few hundred fish bumping so far. I have bumped in the most crazy conditions, upwards of six, seven mile an hour current, all the way down to, I have bumped, uh, technically I'll call it walking baits, all the way down to like 0 0.6, 0 0.7 miles an hour. Um, the technique of bumping is, the, I call, I define things, thumping, walking, bumping. Um, we'll go over all three in this video. Uh, thumping is, you're going with the current, at current speed, maybe just a tad slower, and that bait is essentially directly beneath you, and you're just lifting it up, dropping it down, lifting it up, dropping it down, lifting it up, dropping it down. Uh, that's a decent technique. It's actually good for flatheads. I've caught a lot of flatheads doing that. Bumping is when you cut the speed of the current and you're letting your bait walk, like bounce behind you. Some people call it back bouncing, bumping. But for my videos, that's the terminology I'm going to use. I'm going to use that as bumping. Uh, like currently right now, we're in 2.7, 2.8 mile an hour current. I'm cutting myself down to about 0.7 and I'm bumping the baits behind me. So my kayak is still in motion. The boat's still in motion with the water. Walking baits is you're stationary and you're doing the same exact technique as bumping, but you're stationary. Uh, walking is great if you want to have, you know, a bunch of casted rods out and then you just walk one bait back. Uh, walking is also great, let's say that you want to fish in front of a log jam and you want to get your bait right in front of that log jam. Well, you can walk that bait so you feel that you can, once you get pretty good at bumping, you can feel the difference in the bottom. Like today, I know for a fact I have a rocky bottom, not just because of my graph, but because I can, you can feel it with the with the weight you're using. Um, so let's go over some rigs that I use and the whens and reasons and whys. This is your stereotypical bumping rig. I prefer that type of swivel. I forget the name of it, but just remember your main line goes straight to your sinker. I have a little clip because I like to change out my sinkers uh, quite a bit when I'm bumping. For instance, when I fish the shoots back in Ohio, at the very top, you gotta have a five, and then as you work your way, and it's only like a 300 yard stretch, as you work your way down, you gotta switch it to a four, three, two, uh, because it goes from six, seven miles an hour current right at the underwater bridge, all the way down to like two and a half mile an hour current. But it's only about 15 foot deep, uh, which is kind of what we're dealing with here. This is essentially only 15, 16 foot deep the entire way, so we're only using a two ounce. Um, right here, you see that swivel? Chain swivel helps with tangles, um, but the reason I use this chain swivel and this clip, if I want to use a floating, um, a, flo a float here, I can just change the end of this leader off anytime I want. Typically, my rule of thumb is I normally have my, uh, my bump and weight all the way down to about where my swivel is. I got hung once today and I just retied it. Also, when you're not using a float, you're essentially banking on the distance of this being the height of your bait. And I'm kind of glad I got hung once because I got hung before I caught a fish. And ever since I lowered this a little bit, I have been catching more fish. What I believe is happening is the fish are really tied uh, behind the crevices that I'm fishing under or fishing down. And I believe being closer to those crevices, to those rocks is helping me catch more fish. So this is an example of one, um, you don't need any of this material in the middle. If you just go straight to a sinker, straight to your bait, you're perfectly fine. But I'm in a kayak, so I can't have four or five different rods set up at all times for every style of fishing. So any way I can get ahead of the game. So if I wanted this to have a float on it, it would take me two seconds to have a, a bumping rig for a float because I have pre-tied rigs that are this long with a float right here. So. That is this one without the float. We're gonna go over the one with the float now. All right, so this is the one with the float. Again, same exact thing here. And you'll notice I'm right about to where I put my chain swivel. And then from the chain swivel to the float, float to the bait. Now the length of this is dependent on how close to the bottom you wanna fish. I have this a little longer than normal because today, like I said, I think they're closer to the crevices. So I'm trying to get down in it. Um, after I got hung, the reason I started using this for a second, I was like, oh, there's a lot of rocks. This helps pull your weight off the bottom. This actually has more resistance too. So if you're trying to bump in slower current and your bait's not walking backwards good enough, 
once you throw a float on, it helps with the resistance in the water and it pulls your bait easier. I personally, now this is purely water to water situation to situation. I personally have much less success running a float. Um, I only run a float if I have to. If my regular bumping rig isn't catching fish, I will then move over to a float and then if that's catching fish that day, cool. There are certain times in certain places I will start with a float. For instance, when I'm bumping Nickajack Dam uh, right beneath Chickamauga, I will run this first because we're only looking at about 10 foot of water and you are covering 50% of the water column with a four to five foot leader. So the fish can only be so many places and the current's so strong, you have to remember too, this is getting pulled down. And there's a lot of snags below dams, so the float helps. Um, I personally don't have as much success running a float. Like right now, I would only run a float if I absolutely had to. I'm glad I didn't catch any fish when I started using this because every other fish I caught was on the other on the other setup. But I mean, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. I know some people who only use the float. Um, I just don't have as much success. Something that is extremely important if you're gonna do this. Taglines are one of your biggest enemies when you're bumping. So you see, you got you got to get really good with your knots because I have my tag, I mean, you can barely even touch that tagline. If your taglines are too long, you'll constantly, if you're running a lot of material like I am, you're gonna constantly have your stuff get hung, hung up in itself and it's really, really, really annoying. So this is, uh, this is an example of one with a float. But again, you don't need all this hardware. It could literally be down to your, uh, down to your weight, straight to a peg float, to your bait. It doesn't have to be this fancy. Um, but I do it this way again. I don't. This is one I tie straight to it. But normally this is on a clip, so I can switch it whenever I want at any point in time. And now we're gonna get to at the actual act of bumping. Oh, also, you need a slightly. Most of the time, you need a heavier weight when you're running a float because there's more resistance, so you need more weight to hold it down to the bottom. Um, if you are brand new to bumping, my suggestion, find 30 foot, 30 to 50 foot of water, find two to two and a half mile an hour current, cut your speed down to like one to 0 0.8, 0 0.8 to one, use a three or a four and a float rig. That is the best way to learn because that's the e that is the easiest type of bumping. 30 to 50 foot, two and a half mile an hour current, use a float rig. And that is the easiest way to learn how to bump. Um, less depth and more depth uh, without a float, you're gonna have to know what you're doing. You can't, it's really hard to just kind of throw yourself into the world of bumping without knowing what you're doing. So if you're brand new to bumping, my suggestion, 30 to 50 foot, two to two and a half mile an hour current, try and bump that, uh, try and find like, uh, not a real snaggy area to learn the technique. And now let's, uh, that was a lot of talking, but not a lot of people know the intricacies of bumping at this stage. So let's go to the actual act of bumping. I'm gonna use the, we'll use the float rig, just because I know it's for a fact it's gonna work and it's easier. How to set up the bump once you know how to cut your speed count how many times you got to hit up on your trolling motor to get there so what i do is i go to where i want to start my bump i kill my spot lock i let myself go for a little bit then i hit the cardinal direction button once i hit the cardinal direction button my motor knows it wants to go that way i'll hit up the amount of times i know to cut my speed from previous bumps and then i'll start walking or bumping my bait so in this case it's kill the motor, go for a little bit, hit cardinal direction, and then I'm gonna hit up six times because I know that's gonna get me to the speed I need to start my bump. Once I start my bump and the little line's out, I'm gonna hit up one more time because as more line goes out, there's less resistance and it's harder for the bait to get pulled away from you. So you gotta increase that resistance by increasing your speed. Two and a half mile an hour current, I'm probably gonna be going uh, point three to point six depending on the wind etc so yeah let's uh let's get going so i uh, just hit that one two three four five six all right we're letting her down once you feel it hit bottom stop it with your thumb pop it up real quick drop it back down every time right before i go to pull up 
I like just a little bit of line out. So I don't know. I'll try and do it this way so you guys can see it. Every time I hit the ground, I let a little line out, boom, lift it up. Put the ground, little line up, lift it up. Ground, little line up, lift it up. Now I'm doing really big strokes, so for the sake of you guys being able to see it, my favorite way to bump is very, very tiny. I, I want to keep my bay at the bottom as much as possible. But this is just to show you guys how to actually do the technique. So I hit the bottom and you feel it. You literally feel it. And another uh, pointer, some people may not agree with this, but this has made my life so much easier bumping. I use 30 pound test down to my weight. And the reason I do that is a stiffer line sends a better vibration. A weaker line does not. For example, if you just straighten out 30 pound test and flick it, it's gonna make a very, very strong vibration all the way up there, even at a longer distance. Take 10 pound line and flick it. It ain't gonna make as strong as the vibration. This is all about touch and feel. Also, I haven't ran into any snags where I couldn't easily break off 30 pounds, so it is what it is. So here we are bumping, bumping away. We got the speed cut. Every time I feel the bottom, I lift up a little bit. Right before I lift up, I let a little line out. I, I should have a Jesse cam on so you guys can see what I mean, but right here, boom, let a little line out. Right here, boom, let a little line out. Now, I'm probably going up and hill, up a little hill right now, or a little rock, or maybe a big rock, because in between me bouncing, it's not as much. And now, now I'm on the other side of that. You see, I'm, I'm letting a lot more line out and I'm bouncing a little more because it wants to get away from me. You'll end up learning what that feels like over time. And you actually, you just gotta play with it, guys. The only way to get good at this is to physically do it. And there's not a lot of us that go out there first day and get good at this. It takes a lot of practice. There's not a lot of catfishing techniques that take finesse. This actually takes a little bit of athleticism and finesse. But again, I would suggest start off with a three ounce weight and a float. Go down to uh, try and find 30 to 50 feet. Use a fl um, two to two and a half mile an hour current. And it's fine, try, try and find a longer stretch of where it's consistently that depth and that current. It's pretty, it's pretty dang easy. And over time, you'll eventually start realizing the difference between a bite and hitting the bottom. Uh, bites are pretty unique, a uh, unique tug. Rarely does a bite, you know, like when you're dragging, for the first couple times you drag, sometimes you get a little anxious when the rod hits bottom, but over time you kind of realize what a snag is and a little, you know, bouncing off the bottom against the uh, bumping. I'm saying, I'm sorry, against a hit. Um, that's not exactly that in this, when you're bumping. The hit is pretty, you know when a hit's coming. Uh, the hits aren't as hard on a float, because when you're up on a float, if they hit that and start swimming towards you, there is slack line between you and the bait, so you don't know. You might not necessarily know. So over time, you're gonna have to realize what your bait feels like the entire time. And if it just randomly disappears, one of two things happen. You got hung, or you got a fish swimming up the river with your bait in its mouth. When you're not running a flow, almost every single hit is very obvious because it goes, you're directly to your bait from your main line. There's nothing in between you and your hook. You'll also start learning, you know, when you're hitting debris, what it feels like when you're real or when you're going over it. So like right there, I, I definitely just hit a little bit of debris. I got over it, now I'm behind it, there we go, now I'm back to ball. Now I'm trying to get back, there's another piece, alright, now I'm over it, now we're back. Alright, last but not least on the bumping, let's talk about reels. And the things to look for, the ones I like, and all that fun stuff. First thing, regardless of brands, you want a higher ratio, which means 7-3 to 1, 7-1 one to 1, uh, very long story short, what that means is you reel more line in with less reels. Uh, if you don't know anything about reels, you want a higher first number and a lower second and third number. 
that's the easiest way to remember if you don't want to go into the specifics of a reel for bumping. You want a low profile if you can, um, because they're lighter. They're much lighter than your, you know, your bigger Abu Garcias and stuff. Uh, I run 300 series. I haven't had a need for anything bigger than a 300 series. I know some companies are coming out with 400 series because bumping is becoming more popular. Um, but 300 for me has been more than enough. I have bumped a hundred feet holes with this reel right here in two and a half mile an hour current. And I, you know, you, do you spool out eventually? Yes. But is it in the first 15 minutes? No. Like I can probably bump a good half hour, two mile an hour current in a hundred foot of water before I spool out. So, uh, 300 series in most of the low profiles that I'm about to mention work. There are clearly ones that are higher quality than others. This is my absolute favorite at the moment of the ones I own. It's the Akuma Citrix. Uh, I believe it's the 300 series. I'm almost positive. I can't remember. But I hold, it holds a few hundred yards of braid in here. I use 55 or 65 pound braid. It also is a great reel for dragging, suspending, all that stuff. In a kayak specifically, my rods and reels need to be able to do everything. They need, they need to be able to drag, suspend, they need to be able to do everything. If they can't do everything, I don't want it on my kayak. So every single rod you see me have can bump. They all have a low profile on them. They all have a relatively decent reel. Now the other reels that I have, the Daiwa Tatula, that is an amazing reel, probably just as good as the Citrix. Um, I'm just not a fan of it not being as wide here. I do like this being a little wider on the Citrix where my thumb is, but that reel's really, really good. Um, I have a Abu Max 60 right here. It's a lower gear ratio, but it holds a crap ton of line. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. I wish it had a higher gear ratio, and that gear ratio, guys, for me anyway, it's about setting the hook. Less reels down to tighten that, to tighten your line, because I just almost spooled this, and my line was hundreds of yards behind me. If a fish hits, I need to quickly be able to straighten that line out. If you're in wind or anything and that line starts to bow, that's that much less resistance you have against that fish and that hook being set. So the higher ratio lets you lock down that line quicker. Uh, and then the last reel I have is the PC Fun Alios. As far as quality, the Citrix and the Daiwa I own are miles above the other two as far as quality is concerned. These will break much uh, these will break much later in life than the Abu and the PC Fun. Um, there, there's nothing wrong with them. They're good budget reels. They get the job done. Ryan abuses the heck out of his PC Fun Alios. It's just, it's just fact of the matter. Just the, the quality's not there. Um, they're going to get the job done. You, you might get away with using them for years. Just like all these reels. You, you might buy one of these. It might break the first 20 minutes you're using it. But it's made out of metal. Like the components are good. You buy the PC Fun Alios, it's hard plastic. So th that's just the facts. That's not my opinion, that, that's the facts. So uh, I don't have any uh, any horse in the race with any of the real companies. Those are just my honest opinions. And um, yeah, th that's your reels. Uh, if you're in a kayak, oh, also I like the EVA foam the whole way down. I hate when it has a cutout here uh, because I use the rod, I use plastic rod holders. I use stealth rod holders. This grips my rod holder much better than the material of the blank. Another thing you want to look out for in bumping rods, without going into the style glass, etc., without going into the style of rod a bumping rod should be, if you see a thicker rod down here and it looks like a regular rod that they threw the word bumping on, it's probably a regular rod they threw the word bumping on and they just shaved the EVA foam from here to here. Uh, when you're buying a bumping rod, they're typically more slender, right here, um, and they don't look like a normal fishing rod, a uh, normal cat fishing rod. Um, the other other great bumping rods that I have had, Shattercat, absolutely amazing. Um, the best bumping rod, in my opinion, that's out there is the B&M bumping rod. I don't think anything remotely comes close to that. Uh, I'm using the Anvil right now. My buddy Mark Diedrich, he got me on these at CatCon. I loved it today. I absolutely loved it. I don't have enough information on me to say it's better than B&M, but I did absolutely love this rod. Extremely sensitive, extremely light. Um, the only thing I dislike slightly, but it's because I'm a midget, this handle is slightly long for me. So I like the bump 
with the rod in my chest because I'm on a kayak and I like getting it high up here. The problem is my arm's almost fully extended. <laughs> so I had to bump with it up in my waist while I was, while I was fishing. That's a very niche thing for someone who is um, vertically challenged. You might love this. This might be amazing for you in a boat. It, you, uh, this is probably amazing for Ryan Bortz. The only thing I so far don't like about it is the length of the handle. But again, that is purely me. Like, I would have preferred the handle being about right here. But other, I mean, other than that, absolutely great rod. So, um, yeah, that's rods and reels for bumping. I might put this in the middle of me explaining all the other stuff before I sh actually show you how to bump. And then hopefully I get on one before I leave here. I gotta fi I'm gotta. i fishing one more time tomorrow. Hopefully I get on one before I leave here so I can actually show you guys what it looks like to reel one in. Normally with the, uh, you're doing 17 different things when you're bumping from a kayak and trying to film. Woo! I think we have a legitimate one on our hands, guys. That hit, that hit was no joke. Please stay buttoned up. Uh, the back of my kayak is running for the shore. He's not running us upstream. So I gotta make sure my kayak doesn't... Uh... Huh. I might have to take him out to the middle of the river. This is intense. I know, I also need the... Uh... I need the net on the other side of me. This is a good fish. Woohoo! I'm sorry I'm not fixing the camera angle on this one. Until we get until we get him settled. I do have to go out into the middle of the river though here. This sucks. I gotta take him out. I'm a <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> I'm sideways with the current being pulled in the other direction. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't be here without this kayak though, and without this form of fishing. Oh. 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 There we go. Oh. Oh, I might be able to kill the motor now. Dick guys, this is my PB Blue in the Ohio River for sure. Holy sh- I hope- Oh no, 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 no. My full motor is still technically going. I hope you guys got a peek at him at least. Oh, that hurts. Oh. Oh God. Oh. Oh, 
Oh, Jesus. There we go. Oh, there we go. That's not a. Oh man. This is my 50. I don't care what anyone says. I got my 50 and I got them bumping. What's up, guys? Oh, oh I'm so excited. I love, I love everything about this. All right. See you later, bud. See you, buddy. I got witnesses.